As the whistle blew ending the third quarter, it occurred to me that Isaac and Gabriel had not returned. I immediately launched a search mission. As I was walking toward the port of John, I saw a sight that filled me with horror and alarm. Isaac was chasing Gabriel. You may wonder, what's the big deal about that? Children do chase each other. Sometimes they're playing tag, sometimes they're after a share of gummy bears, and sometimes it's with an aluminum baseball bat with the intent to knock sense into the other's head. Boys will be boys. This particular episode of Pursuit was different. With my super acute powers of perception, I noticed that Gabriel was missing something. His clothing. All of his clothing. That boy of mine, if I decided to claim him, was as bare as the day he was born in front of all those people. He said abruptly on the first step, tears welling in his eyes. The bleakness of his life stretched before him as anger surged through his veins like hot lava. You left me alone, he choked to the empty yard. I don't want to do this, he whispered, feeling so small, adrift, and unhappy. His thoughts wandered to his kids again, and an overwhelming feeling of helplessness surrounded him. Felt good and all washed clean of sin for the first time I had ever felt so in my life, and I knowed I could pray now. But I didn't do it straight off, but laid the paper down and sat there thinking, thinking how good it was all this happened so, and how near I came to being lost and going to hell. And went on thinking, and got to thinking over our trip down the river, and I see Jim before me all the time, in the day and in the night time, sometimes moonlight, sometimes storms, and we are floating along, talking and singing and laughing. But at some point in time, cable television managed to convince me I might like to flip a house. As if I had the first idea. Flipping a house, for all intents and purposes, seems like a simple idea. Purchase an old or run-down residential property, do a complete makeover, and resell it for a big profit. A 30-minute reality show really makes it look easy. Until you watch someone who has no idea what they are doing trying to pull it off. Inevitably, the unskilled, the uninformed, and the unprepared crash and burn. Mig rode the winds of big buffalo land. His dapper antennas, though, hummed a bit bland. Girls tried to beguile him with the song of their wings, but his heart was beating for the world and its things. So he grabbed a little suitcase with stickers on each side and looked at the wild geese that flew up with pride. Have you ever experienced a salesperson who asks a question in a negative light rather than from a positive perspective? Like this. You don't want to buy something, do you? <laughs> Now, I know that probably sounds nuts, but salespeople are guilty of this more than you might imagine. Daddy, I'm scared, Samantha said as she looked up at her father. Alan Anderson stared at the television with wide eyes. A reporter on CNN was talking on the phone to a news anchor, and on the screen there was a line of bold text. Daddy, asked the five-year-old in a tiny voice. Alan held his gaze on the television. I have to hear this. This news is important. He told himself. Daddy, her words tugged at him. Daddy, her insistence pulled him back to inside his living room. What is it, honey? 